الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah and I bear witness that Muhammad peace be upon him is his final messenger my beloved brothers and sisters, the first thing we remind each other about is developing a better relationship with Allah, the correct relationship with Allah, worshipping Allah alone, making sure that we don't associate partners with Him, making sure that we follow the footsteps of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and making sure that we do better as the days pass and we don't take steps back. So my brothers and sisters, we must realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the blessing of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being our messenger. لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ Indeed, Allah has favored the believers by sending to them or when he sent to them a messenger from among them to remind them, to purify them, to read to them the verses of Allah, the revelation, and so on. Favor of Allah. So consider yourself favored when you know that Allah sent to you from among you, from among you a messenger to remind you. And take the reminder seriously. No matter what happens, that reminder is valid right up to the end of time. And we will need it in order to enter paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness. One of the beautiful things that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us is supplication. How to supplicate, how to make dua, how to call out to Allah for our needs. So remembrance of Allah is one thing. When you recite the Quran, that is the remembrance of Allah. When you engage in what's known as dhikr, repeating the names of Allah, the qualities of Allah, praising Allah, that is all dhikr, it is the remembrance of Allah. Similarly, if you were to commit a sin and you remembered Allah and abstained from it, that is the remembrance of Allah. Or if you uh, wanted to fulfill a good deed, you remembered Allah and you fulfilled it, that is also the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we say remembrance of Allah, it includes a lot of things. But when we say dua, supplication, it is a type of remembrance of Allah, but in it there is more of the calling out to Allah for our needs. And Allah loves it when we call out to him. The Prophet ﷺ says, whoever doesn't call out to Allah, doesn't supplicate, doesn't ask Allah for his or her needs, Allah is upset with that person. Ask Allah. Allah wants you to worship him. Acknowledge that he is the greatest. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, called out to Allah using so many beautiful supplications. You know, I have a series known as supplications from Revelation, but we did not cover every single supplication because obviously there are so many. But today I wish to share with you a hadith of Anas radiallahu an. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us quite clearly. And he was speaking to one of his family members, telling them that, you know what? Why don't you listen to what I have to say? Or would you like to listen? You wouldn't lose anything if you listened to what I said, subhanAllah. So he gave a small introduction. He said, every morning and evening, call out to Allah using the following words. Allahumma ya hayyu ya qayyum. In fact, he just started with ya hayyu. Ya hayyu ya qayyum bi rahmatika astaghith aslih li sha'ni kullah. وَلَا تَكِلْنِي إِلَىٰ نَفْسِي طَرْفَةَ عَيْنِ wow. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaching his own family, teaching his own family a dua to call out to Allah every morning and evening. It is important for us to analyze this. Why was he teaching it to his family? Because it was obviously very important. The messenger, the greatest of creatures, the most blessed, the most loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, teaching his family to say something every morning and evening. Ya hayyu, ya qayyumu. So that is calling out to Allah. Oh, you who is ever living, alert, you know, you know what's going on. The minute you say, oh, you who is 
all alive, you know, al hay the one who is alive, yes, but he is alive for you as well in the sense that he will take care of every one of your needs. You're calling Allah with a beautiful name of his, Ya Hayyu, O you who is ever living. And this name has very deep meaning in it. And then we say Ya Qayyum. Qayyum is a, the one who is present for you at your service, for your protection at all times and in all places. Al-Qayyum, the all alert, all powerful, all able, all in one. Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum. Just by saying those names of Allah, you've already praised Allah tremendously. If only you understood what that meant. Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum. Imagine we are expressing our we are expressing our weakness and the fact that we are incapable of protecting ourselves except with the help of Allah. And we are dependent on Allah when Allah is totally independent. Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum, I'm calling out to you. O oh, you who is all alert, all alive, all capable, all able, who is there for me at all times, in all places, who is able to do anything and everything. Oh, you, now we're calling out to Allah. Birahmatika astaghith. It is your mercy that I desperately seek. Istighatha. Istighatha is when you desperately seek something from Allah and Allah alone. Istighatha is not allowed except from Allah. I cannot seek istighatha. I cannot do istighatha. I cannot seek that desperate help except from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I've got to say, Birahmatika astaghith, Allah, it is your mercy that I desperately seek. So you used his names. You then said, it is your mercy that I desperately seek. So I'm in desperate need right now. For what? For your mercy. Oh, you who is all capable, all able. Now, what type of mercy would you like? Obviously, everyone is in different situations. No matter who you are, where you are, we have unique situations. But the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he teaches a dua, it encompasses everyone, everywhere. And everything, subhanallah. So we have, Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum, Bi Rahmatika Astaghith. Your mercy I desperately seek. Aslih li sha'ni kullah. Make good for me all my matters, all my affairs, all my issues. Make them good for me, subhanallah. We're calling out to Allah with beautiful words saying, Oh Allah, make good for me. I desperately seek your mercy. All my affairs, I want you to make them good for me, no matter what I'm going through, be it a health matter, be it, for example, financial matters, social matters, your marriage, your whatever it may be, some uncertainty, a job, anything it may be, aslihli sha'ni kullah, your deen, your dunya, your akhirah, your religion, your world, your worldly living, as well as your hereafter, aslihli sha'ni kullah, make good for me, all my affairs, all my matters, all my things, everything, be there for me, O oh Allah. Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum, bi rahmatika astaghith, aslih li sha'ni kullah, wa la takilni ila nafsi tarfata ayn, and don't leave me alone even for the blink of an eye. Don't leave me to attend to myself. Don't leave me to myself alone that you are not with me. Even for a moment, I need your mercy mercy at all times for every moment while I'm awake, while I'm asleep, while I'm here, while I'm there. When I remember you, when I am oblivious of you, may Allah never make us oblivious of him. May Allah protect us at all times. So we are saying, وَلَا تَكِلْنِي إِلَى نَفْسِي طَرْفَةَ عَيْنِ Don't leave me to myself even for this, the moment that it takes to blink an eye. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be there for us at all times. May he help us. May he grant us. May he guide us. May he open our doors. May he truly be uh, serving his mercy upon us and showering his blessings upon us at all times. He is Al-Hay, Al-Qayyum. My brothers and sisters, did you know that it's very important to try and learn the supplications that were made or taught by the Prophet? 
Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as well as those that are in the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. Allah has many names and qualities. Allah has many names and qualities. And Allah loves for us to use those names and qualities to call out to him. And that's why it's important for us not just to say, Ya Allah, but we say, Ya Rahmanu, Ya Rahimu, O you who is most merciful, O you who is most forgiving, O you who listens to the dua, O you who is the Almighty, O you who is the greatest, O you who is the curer, O you who is the owner of the day of judgment, and so on. Learn the names of Allah because in another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam also tells us about how anyone who learns 99 of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, memorizes them, understands them and uses them to worship Allah, to call out to him, to supplicate to him, they will have paradise in return because they've recognized Allah. You recognize Allah through his names and qualities. So if you were to understand every name of Allah and every quality of Allah and you were to know and believe that nobody can be equal to Allah in any of his names or qualities. There is nothing like unto Allah. No body, no thing like unto Allah. Yet he is all hearing, all seeing. So his Hearing is like none other and his seeing is like none other. It is way beyond the hearing and seeing of anyone else. So my brothers and sisters learn the names of Allah. Also, it's important for us to know that when we've learned the names and qualities of Allah, we've memorized them, at least 99 of them, and they go beyond that figure. But at least 99 of them, we need to memorize them inshallah understand them, use them to call out to Allah, it will help us recognize Allah. When you've recognized Allah, Allah says, you know what? Man ahsaha aw hafidhaha dakhal al jannah. Whoever has memorized them, all of them. And the word memorize, I've tried to summarize the various meanings that the scholars have put into that particular word. Uh, and inshallah, when we do that, we will definitely earn paradise. And then there is a name that we don't know. We don't know exactly which name it is, but one of the names of Allah, if you were to call out to him using that particular name, it's called Ismullah al-A'zam, the greatest name of Allah. If you were to use that name to call out to Allah, he would give you exactly what you want, when you want, how you want it. That's in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. But the question is, what is that name? I don't know. You don't know. Perhaps there are some opinions. Ya ahad as-samad alladhi lam yalid wa lam yulad, etc. Wa lam yakullahu kufuwan ahad. Various uh, opinions, but the reality is we don't know that name. You need to call out using every name that you've ever come across and quality of Allah in order for you to get what you want, exactly how you want it, when you want it. So I thought I'd share with you in today's sermon the beautiful dua. يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك أستغيث أصلح لي شأني كله ولا تكلني إلى نفسي طرفة عين and I've explained it it is referring initially calling out to Allah with his names O you who is all alert all awake all able all capable uh, the one who is there for me at all times all places I desperately seek your mercy I desperately seek your mercy in all my affairs, all my matters, don't leave me to myself even for the batting of an eyelid, even for the blinking of an eye. That's the dua. You should make it every morning and every evening. You can repeat it as many times as you want. Odd numbers. Make sure you're concentrating and see how you feel. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the ability to memorize this dua and many other duas made by the Prophet ﷺ or taught by him. For indeed, that is the mercy of Allah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.